All right, Steve, it's a disappearance that's pitted parents against police and has ripped families apart. Tonight, Ed O'Brien takes a new look at another Capital Region cold case, the ongoing search for Jalik Rainwalker. Six and a half years later, police are still getting tips about the disappearance of Jalik Rainwalker. Absolutely. Um, weekly, sometimes daily, depending. Um, we, we've gotten some recent tips um, within the last couple of weeks that we're taking a look at. But so far, everything from river searches to false sightings, they have all led to a dead end. Jalik was 12 years old when he was last seen at a Latham restaurant. He had been adopted by Stephen Kerr and his wife Jocelyn. But when problems developed, Jalik was sent to live with what is called a respite family. The way Stephen Kerr told the story in 2007, the two spent the night in the Greenwich home of Kerr's parents. And the following morning, Jalik was gone. Stephen Kerr was interviewed by us and, of course, by investigators, but claimed the deck was stacked against him. I'm not privy to much of the investigation because the police are still working on the assumption partially that I did something wrong. Jocelyn was pretty much forthright with us all the time. Stephen was hit or miss, but, you know, then stop communicating, hire an attorney. Uh, this is your kid that's missing. Uh, you know, how do you just do that? Kerr was quickly named a person of interest in what is a homicide probe. Chief Bell, who is sitting on the results of an investigation into the case, says that is still absolutely true. When a child goes missing, a parent needs to know where that child is. And so I, I feel like they know. That's Barbara Reilly, the mother-in-law of Stephen Kerr and the mother of his wife, Jocelyn. She tells me they don't have a relationship anymore. Like Chief Bell, she has questions about inconsistencies in the story told by Kerr. Why, for instance, this tower relayed a signal from his cell phone if he was nowhere near it? That tower is right across the street from this business. It's where Barbara and her husband just moved in. It's also right down the street from the Hudson River. And one police officer told Barbara this is a notorious dumping spot for bodies. You might call it eerie coincidence. Barbara thinks there's a reason she and her husband ended up here. She's certain he's not alive, but says someone has to speak for him. I'm not angry. I'm just, uh, there's no closure. It's like, is Jalik buried? Is he in the Hudson River? Is he in Connecticut, you know, New Hampshire? Or, you know, there is that 1% possibility that he would be alive. You know, and it's just not knowing. Like Chief Bell, she's convinced the case will someday be solved. Ed O'Brien, CBS 6 News. And we did try talking to the Kerrs once again. Their attorney, Jeff McMorris, tells us that they're not speaking publicly about Jalik, but says that they've always taken the position that he will come home someday, walk through the door, and wonder what the fuss was all about.